electric field and thus the electric force inside the conductor is equal to zero. If you try envisioning using field lines, what's going to happen outside the conductor, you can probably get a good picture of it working kind of like a magnet with north and south poles, where the electric field is going to work like a magnetic field and going from one end all the way to the other. But how can we formulate that precisely? That is what we're going to be exploring in today's electromagnetism lecture. These electric charges are moving very fast. So these electric charges are basically staying still. This insulator is like a sponge for electric charge. It's taking in a bunch of it without letting any of it out. So conductors are mostly the important one. Why? Because insulators are made specifically so that they inhibit the effects of an electric field or any electric charge, which means that the fields generated by them are basically just a normal electric field, but damping. So that's why we don't want to investigate them. They're not that interesting. But conductors are very different. How do we investigate the electric field around a conductor? Let's try visualizing it. The way a conductor works, it's going to move all negative charges to one end and all positive charges to the other end. What does that mean inside? Well, inside, the positive field is going to go this way, the negative field is going to go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. So it appears it's creating, you know, this kind of field that outs one in and out. But of course, when you take into account the sign of the uh, electrons, or sorry, negative charge, any charge that's going to be within the conductor, but of course that's not what happens outside. Outside, there's going to be a large electric field. Now, how do we quantify that? Well, here's the unbelievable part. Because of Gauss's law, if we have any charge distributed within a Gaussian surface, the electric field it will give off is always just of this form. Is always of this form. Recall that Gauss's law states that for any arbitrary surface, since area increases quadratically as you get farther and farther away and increase the radius, so as this increases quadratically, when you multiply the amount of force by the area rudimentarily, since we're talking about flux for the electric field here, this scaling effect where these two scaling effects just about cancel out and give you a constant electric field no matter what surface you're working, including a rectangular one, a bean-shaped one, a sphere, or anything else. Of how conductors separate charge, if there's a hole inside a conductor, there's actually going to be a bunch of charge accumulating on the boundary specifically the charge density divided by epsilon naught, multiplied by the area surrounding this cavity. But inside the cavity and outside the cavity, the electric field is zero. Well, of course, that's unless there's some charge inside the cavity, because obviously then it would exert an electric field. But anything from outside is completely sheltered from the inside by this wall. And any electric field from the inside is totally sheltered from the outside by this wall. So, because of this boundary condition, that means that if you are stuck in a metal car, for example, then any lightning strike that deposits lots of electric charge to the car is actually 
well, it's going to make the car pretty unsafe to be in and also very hot, but you're not actually going to get struck directly. You're not going to get electrocuted because you're sitting inside the cavity of a conductor. Since your car is made out of metal, which is a conductor, and you're sitting inside one of the seats, which is a cavity, that means that anything outside is never going to be able to penetrate inside. So that is the force that a conductor exerts on any charge passing by.